welcome to Nature Play Lifestyle. My name is Jenny and on this channel you will find resources to help support you in connecting children to the natural world. Today's episode is all about math and what math can look like in an outdoor setting. Last week I did a video on literacy and how you can bring literacy outdoors. I talked about midline, crossing the midline and pincer grasp and all that great stuff. So if you want to watch that just head up to the link up there, <laughs> wherever it is, and you can go ahead and watch that video. Today we are going to focus on math and I'm really excited about this opportunity to share my knowledge on how I support math concepts in the outdoors and how you can do that as well. So as you can probably predict, math is pretty easily translated in the outdoor setting. We're talking about counting, we're talking about classifying, sorting, about spatial awareness. We're doing all of those things and it can be done pretty gracefully outdoors. There are so many loose parts for children to measure, like I said, to sort and do all the fun things that you would do indoors on a worksheet outdoors to get that play-based child-centered approach to your learning. Before we get started on the math, I just want to briefly talk a little bit about my approach to teaching, really short, so then if you're new here, you'll know a little bit about who I am and how I teach outdoors. So I have been a nature-based educator for the last 10 years. I've been teaching preschoolers for the last six, so it looks like me taking them outside, exploring nature, and following their lead. So I'm very play-based, child-centered, and nature focused, obviously, we're outside. So that's kind of my approach to teaching. I always try to find what they're interested in and figure out how I can work off of that interest. I am also really Reggio inspired and Montessori inspired as well, as well. So you will see those things in my classroom and I can share those things with you as well, how it can be implemented in the outdoors. So I wanted to share that really briefly with you just so you can know a little bit about me and if you have any questions about that, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. So in my teaching, I do follow a curriculum. I do have learning standards and learning objectives that I want to follow and support children in learning. So for math, I do have three main areas that I'm going to observe and I have intentions that I set. So then I kind of map that out throughout my school year so I can make sure that I'm focusing on those three intentions and digging deeper and deeper in them to help support children in their learning, especially those ones that are going into kindergarten. Three main learning outcomes I have when it comes to math is going to be counting and number concepts, spatial awareness, and patterning and classification. So we're going to go through each of those three main areas and discuss ways that we can support children outdoors with these three things in mind. The first concept is counting and number concepts and what this looks like in my classroom, what it is, and how we support this in an outdoor setting. So what this looks like is we're always counting, right? There's always things to count, always things to wonder about. And we're talking about number concepts, which is like many, few, far, or wait, many, few, less, or more. To just begin that interest and develop that skill. That's my starting point. And then let's talk a little bit about the activities you can apply to learn this kind of skill with your child. Okay, I just want to obviously talk about counting. This can happen anywhere, but in the outdoors, you have so many loose parts that children can manipulate and handle that it's going to be really essential for them to be able to count, explore those numbers, and just share their knowledge about the numbers that they're counting about. So sticks are a great resource to use. Really any loose part that the child is interested in, you can apply a math concept to that, right? So let's say a child is like very interested in fort building, you can take those math skills and start talking about the counting of the sticks, how many sticks they have, do they have more sticks, fewer sticks, less sticks, more sticks, and start talking about those math concepts while they're building a fort that they're interested in. So this is following the child's interests and building on their math concept. I try to share math anytime and interweave it throughout my day. So while we're hiking, we're counting kids, we're counting flowers, we're counting leaves, we're counting things. And just purely modeling that with children, I have found that they are more interested in sharing their knowledge and talking more openly about these math concepts because I'm sharing those things and I'm modeling that. 
So to build on a little bit on this math concept of counting and trying to figure out ways that we can talk about number recognition and writing numbers, I'm willing, I always bring out some sort of whiteboard. I'm outside all the time. So having worksheets or anything like that is just not conducive to my class space. So what I'll do is when we're talking about how many kids are there, we're writing those numbers down on a whiteboard. Another way that you can also apply these math concepts and wanting to encourage children to write is just simply using your magic finger. I noticed that especially from the younger children that are still not really ready for this math concept of writing numbers or maybe not ready to even identify numbers, having a simple activity of just writing those numbers with your finger is really helpful because it's just magic and you really don't see any of those numbers come out. So we might be sitting at group circle and we'll say, like, we'll go off to that number that we have. We'll say, okay, let's all write the number 12. So we'll take a one and then make a two, right? So then we have a 12 and we always are trying to encourage them to just write from the top to the bottom and talk about the number two and one. And this just starts that conversation of letter rec or pff, I want to call it letter recognition, but we're talking about numbers, number recognition. So that will just start that concept, especially just gaining that interest for those younger kids that maybe aren't ready for it yet. So it's really important to also have these numbers for children to be able to engage with and work on and just see. So in an outdoor classroom, we don't really have walls to put these numbers on or any of those manipulatives that are going to be plastic. We always try to use natural materials. So a way that you can apply this and help children to see those numbers and start understanding that those numbers actually mean things is by writing them on rocks or tree cookies or any kind of natural material you might have in, in your outdoor space. Simply putting these out in areas that the children are engaging in is going to help them to start seeing these numbers and start asking questions and also just engage with them, right? So that would be one recommendation I'll have for that and starting that process. Once you get into your school year or your, your children are getting more and more interested in numbers and writing these numbers, that's when you can add more and more. And that's when you can start bringing in pieces of paper or markers or some type of writing utensil and focus some work on that. Okay, so we covered a lot of that. I wanna go into quantity concepts and how we can start encouraging this in an outdoor setting. So again, I talked a little bit about this and you're gonna hear me talk a lot about modeling in all of my videos because I think it's very important. So to start this process, you're just going to be talking about more, less, few, and many and just interweave that language throughout your day. So it can look like when you're sitting down at group circle or when you're sitting down, if you have like a group snack, talking about what they have for their snack. I noticed you have many pretzels and you have few blueberries. Pointing out that there's fewer and more and you will start seeing that after you've modeled that language, they will start talking about those things while they're eating or while we're on our hike, they'll notice logs that are stacked all together and talk about how oh, there's so many logs. I wonder why there's so many logs in this pile. Why is there not that many piles of logs over here? The next concept I wanna talk about is spatial relationships and what this can look like in the classroom. So I think of spatial relationships not only as being aware of where your body is in space, but I want to talk about spatial relationships. So what is the relationship between my body and some other object? Or what is the relationship between filling in a circle with different materials, right? So there's different ways of doing this and I want to kind of focus on that and talk about why it's important to start building spatial relationship skills with young learners. Spatial awareness is the ability to recognize and interact with the environment around you. And this concept is really important for pre-geometry, so talking about where things are located, how big things are, what shapes are, the reason why this concept is so valuable is because it's going to help build your child's interest and knowledge on geometry. So when they do go into kindergarten, first grade, second grade, they're going to have these skills already as a foundation in learning those bigger concepts when they go on into the grades that they're going to go into. So some ways that you can start building this is talking about shapes, right? Shapes are a big part of spatial properties and spatial awareness. 
space and sizes and talking about those relationships. Also, we're going to talk about positional words. So what is under, over, things like that is going to start that foundation and recognizing directions of movement. So let's go through a little bit of shapes and how that can look in the outdoors, how you can support children in this area. What I like to do is I like to always have sticks available. Sticks are an amazing source to help support children in building shapes. So we're going to be talking about making simple shapes like triangles, squares, rectangles. I've even started making like octagons and things like that but the simple shapes are going to be the square triangle circle you can go further and further if the children are interested in learning more about shapes so sticks are great because you know they are able to break and form into points circles you can use different like cedar fronds we use those in our classroom you can use um, even the stems of leaves or flowers and you can start to tie those together and make circles so it might be a fun activity to do in a field or in your classroom space and just bring in those materials and start exploring them and making shapes with them. Sometimes I'll put out a laminated piece of paper that does have shapes on them, just so children have a baseline, especially those children are still learning about what shapes look like and what shapes are. So you have a starting point, and then they're able to then engage in it in whatever way they're wanting to. Another way is just to talk about shapes and sizes of objects. So while you're walking, talking about how different leaves are different shapes and just modeling that language again. <laughs> like I said, I told you I was going to talk about it in everything. So just modeling that language with them and talking about how some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller, why leaves are different colors and why leaves are different shapes and sizes and comparing those two. Even an activity that you can do in the fall that I love is finding leaves on the ground and asking children to find the same leaf. And that way that they're trying to look at that shape of the leaf and trying to mimic that by finding the same leaf. And it's really interesting to see, especially the younger children, when you see that concept is still coming up where they're like, well, I found a leaf, but is it the same shape? No. So they have to remember what the shape looks like while they're looking for it. So love playing that game. It's really fun and engaging. Another thing I like to do is simply uh, making like a shape in the ground or like in the mud or wherever you are and having children uh, put loose parts inside of it to fill that shape in and talking about how many more maybe loose parts we need to fill it in. What I've also noticed is that children will make their own shapes and start doing that on their own. And we'll just spend a little bit of time on our hike just hanging out and looking at shapes, making shapes, and filling in those shapes just along the trail. And if somebody comes through, we're just like, move to the side, let them walk past, and then we'll continue our work. The next part of this is space and positional words. And this again is going to have to happen when we're modeling and sharing this kind of language with them. Saying stuff like under, over, on top of, next to, those kind of positional words so then children can start to hear them and hear us say those things and play some games along the way to talk about that. So like you can talk about how we're going to go under this log and over this log. We're going to go through this way and under and under this way, you know what I mean? So you can start using those words while you're walking in your classroom and just modeling that kind of language with them. Um, another way you can do this is you can play a game called camouflage. So have children hide in some ferns, if you have ferns by you, or hide in an area, maybe a prairie or something that has a lot of grass or some things that they can hide behind, even trees, right? It can be anything. So have them hide and then another child is there to talk about who they can see and who's under what and start using those languages. So I see somebody that's under that fern or I see somebody that's over by that tree. So they're starting to talk about those words and use those words in their daily life. Okay, take a deep breath. At least I need it. I've been talking for a long time. Ah, okay, the last part of math concepts is talking about patterning and classification. So this is the beginning stages of math for some children. Sorting and patterning is a big concept that they're going to have to be using in kindergarten and throughout their whole life, right? They are going to be able to, they're going to have to learn how to classify things and how to classify things in different ways, how to sort things from big to little, 
things like that. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about this concept. Talk, talk, talk. Let's start collecting and see what they find and then dump that bag out and let's start to sort and see what color things we found on our hike today or what kinds of sizes we found. So let's put all the small things over in this pile. Let's find all the medium things and put them in this pile. Let's put the big things in this pile. So that's just helping them to see that process. It's done in a fun way. They're engaging in it. And if you're having children that are like coming in and out and like, oh, like this is boring. I don't want to do this. Trying to find ways that they can also be a part of it is going to be helpful for you. So if you have a young child that is really not sure what this sorting thing is and is still learning about this concept, you can ask that child to maybe find something that is green and have them go off and find something that is green and then say, where would you put that green thing? What else looks like green to you over here? And then they can put that there. The first place I would start when I'm introducing this kind of concept is to, to start with color. <laughs> I want to, sh to say sheep, shape, but color. Start with color because that way, they're, they already probably have the basics, basic knowledge of what colors are, and they can be able to sort by that. And then you can build on it and start building more and more as you're going through the school year. And the second part is learning what the attributes of an object have and seeing those are sim or, and comparing them between other objects. So let's say that you have, you went on your collecting hike and now you have all of your materials. Now you can start to talk about what these objects look like and start comparing these objects to one another. So what you could do is just lay those materials out. So you're going to have a conversation with the, the children about these objects and talk about what you notice, have them share what they notice, compare those two things. So some things I might say is like, if I have a pine cone, um, I notice that this pine cone has a lot of spikes on it. But this pine cone is really small and doesn't have any spikes on it. This one's green and this one's brown. I wonder why that is. They're both the same pine cone, but they don't look the same, right? So you can start by talking about that and just sharing. I think children are always interested, at least in my class and the children I've cared for the last 10 years, are always interested in sharing their knowledge and showing each other what they see and notice about an object. Okay, and then the last part is patterning. And this obviously can happen outdoors. The first stage that I would probably start off when I'm thinking about patterning is thinking about what children are wearing and just pointing out what patterns are. I find simply just talking and showing these patterns first is going to be super helpful for them to start seeing those patterns for themselves. So you might say, oh, I noticed that my shirt is yellow, white, yellow, white, yellow. I wonder what color would come next. I also do this while we're hiking. We might find some green leaves and I'll stack them up and sort all the green leaves, stack all the yellow leaves and start patterning that just to myself. And then the children will come in and start seeing, oh, Jen, it looks like you're making your leaves go green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. And then they might mimic that and start finding leaves and mimic that pattern making. Any really loose part that they can manipulate and handle is a great material for them to use for patterning. And again, nature has so many different materials that you can use at your hands. So that's all the concepts I have that I wanted to talk about um, when it comes to my curriculum. If you have other concepts that you work with your children on, please comment those below. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because that helps my channel more and more content for you. So I will see you on Wednesday. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.